G'day, I'm Homer Stiller, and today we're going to do a uh, quick tour of the Sea Glaive. Um, how far I've gotten on it, and um, what's left to do. Um, most of it's done now. There's a couple little tweaks I need to do, like um, uh, tweak the speed control and um, glue up the the fan, the cooling fan, stuff like that. But she's pretty much done and dusted. So let's get to the tour. Okay, well it's been a while since I've done an update, um, but the lathe is pretty close to being finished now. Um, so I've got my my uh, two gauges. I've got uh, um, volts and amps. This is on the DC side, um, so we're going up to 150 volt on the motor um, and the um, most amps that I'm drawing is, a, is about six and a half something like that I am actually thinking of upping that to about eight as the maximum um, and a taco down the bottom um, here's my new control panel which I haven't labelled or done anything on yet um, so how it's been wired now and it's slightly dodgy it's mainly because these are the switches that I had um, the e-stop is the main motor control um, as in it disconnects the motor from the um, speed control and it also activates the speed control um, shutdown so basically tells the speed control um, doesn't actually cut power to the speed control just tells it to shut the motor down um, and this here is our speed control um, and our main power this is a three-way power switch so the first two do nothing um, because it's a, a left on middle off right on to um, two different poles um, and then the red one is my uh, brake. Now I'm using it as a brake to 500 watt um, halogen work light globes. I'll go have a photo of that where how they're mounted in the back. Um, and the switch that used to control the the this lathe you can get with a mill, milling machine attachment. So this switch here used to put um, power to either the um, to either the mill or the lathe and off and I've rewired this so that's forward, off and reverse. Um, the power indicator here is on whenever the, the power is turned, main power is turned on. Um, of course I've rewired the fusing. Um, so as you can see our lights on, I'll shift it in here. Um, now I've, why I've uh, got the pulley, I'm actually getting a, a longer belt for here because this idler basically does nothing. I want to be able to um, release the tension from this belt because now whenever I want to turn the chuck I have to turn the whole drivetrain and it's a little bit of a restriction so I want to be able to actually have the idler do something and put tension on the belt. Um, so I've got two, two speeds. Um, at the moment it's on the slower speed and the maximum RPM on that is about um, 810 and the high speed um, the max is about 1200 RPM um, I could put another like move if I need more speed than that I can actually move this pulley over um, and drive on like one of these here and move this up so I can swap the belts all around but I don't think it's going to be very often I'm going to need to go much faster than 1200. Um, my cooling. Um, so that's actually the back of the motor enclosed in there. Um, that's a toilet flange. Um, so it has this, the black you can see, there's actually like a rubber, a rubber ring so it pushes quite firmly over the motor. This normally mounts 
like where it's where the ceramic bowl slides into the PVC on a toilet fits perfectly um, and then I've got a reducer here running down to the 50 mil pipe and then that runs across to my fan now I have to make an enclosure for this because at the moment this is uh, all live which is less than ideal um, and we'll give you a demo so whenever it's on now the light comes on inside the brake to indicate there's power to the um, speed control and as you can hear the, the fans going I just seem to actually to make this here I just used a, um, a heat gun and shaped that round it's just a uh, 65 to 50 mil reducer I think something like that um, so that's blowing quite a quite a substantial amount of uh, air through the through the motor, which is good. Um, there's no all the safety switches on the on the. Um, motor cover and everything else they've all been disabled now mainly because I couldn't be bothered wiring them in and secondly um, I'm pretty conscious about that um, whenever I open that um, cover I'll be shutting the main power shutting off main power so I'm not overly fussed about that so I do you can see the um, taco light up Started running, you can see all the gauges pop to life. I may need to have a few more tweaks of the controls, but the normal shutdown and if I've got something it's not too bad it, it tends to slow down by itself fairly quickly but um, you can see the brake does stop it a fair bit quicker It'll make more of a difference when there's, uh, or either when it's in the, the higher speed or um, if there's anything substantial in there. Um, now the wiring's a bit of a nightmare because um, because these are all single pole. Actually, that's single pole double throw. Um, normally open, normally closed. Um, so that means that I can the the motor actually drives through here. So when I um, when I open that, that connects reconnects the motor to the um, speed control and also tells the speed control to start turning the motor. And when I push that in, that closes the um, disable on the speed control and opens the circuit to the motor so there's no chance of it getting confused and um, running up the motor because the motor's just not connected and it's only on one side of the motor though the other side's just floating um, which shouldn't be a problem because it's floating into open air so um, so that switches the positive side of the motor and then that runs through this switch here to um, this is a double pole double throw center off switch so it's used to swap the the um, positive and negative on the motor the brake 
is attached to one end, one side of the motor um, and just shorts directly those globes directly across the motor as a load um, this switch in here is also a double pole single throw sorry double, yeah, double pole single throw so it has a normally open normally closed side and that does the same thing when you push the brake it disconnects power from the motor um, and puts the globe across it so again there's no chance of it um, shorting a load across the motor if, it, if it's running let's give you a demo if it's running and I push this here it simply just disconnects the motor and runs the brake across and you can see from my gauges the amps drops to zero the voltage is still up it's not really advisable because it does as you can see put a big spike through the motor that's why I'm only doing it at a slow speed because um, it just basically bang just just clamps the motor straight over the speed control which isn't isn't that good for it they know they like to kind of run up um, so you don't get too much of a load across the speed control so this is just a test cut that I was doing um, just on a piece of scrap and it was basically um, I was doing it quite a slow I think I was turning at about 200 rpm just to see how it would go under under uh, load at low rpm seems to do fairly well the depth of cut that I could do that's a half inch rod um, I was doing a what's that about a five and a half so 2.75 millimeter depth of cut something along those lines anyway Yeah, something like that. There you go, that was the depth of cut. I'll divide by two. So, yeah, 2.6 millimeters depth of cut. That's at a low RPM, um, which wasn't too bad. Again, if I turn up the um, uh, the amps on the motor a little bit, which I'm, as I said, I'm thinking of doing, bringing that up to about 8 amp. And I should be able to increase that depth of cut. Um, but that was at a fairly low RPM. Um, at a higher RPM, yeah, it, it does a much deeper cut. But let's just say it's a, it's much, much better than it was. Um, much uh, deeper. Um, or able to take a much deeper cut so I'm quite pleased with it so far again not that I've really done anything I've only just got it back together um, this whole section back here um, where have I put the old one the old one's there so I've actually replaced this this um, tin one with a that's just made out of uh, plywood um, just because it was what I had on hand and um, easy to uh, attach bits and pieces to with some glue um, and it's uh, pretty sturdy so I'm not too fussed about it with a lick of red paint you can't even tell um, I don't think I'm going to paint my piping which again at the moment I haven't glued it in but um, I don't have any photos of the wiring under here um, you wouldn't really be able to tell and I'll probably get flamed for it because it's a bit uh, it's a bit cowboy um, I've, I tried to re reuse there was a couple of bus bars in there that I've reused well not bus bars terminal blocks that I've reused and a few other bits and pieces in there I may have I'm gonna have to pull Pull things apart when I get better switches anyway and I'll probably give the front of this a paint um, and I have the uh, where is it um, this here is the the original backing from behind that switch which was the forward reverse switch so I'm going to print another um, little backing for that 
and put that on there um, just to pretty it up a little bit but um, so far I'm quite happy it's a much more capable machine I don't think it looks too bad with my my little gauges up there I've got some kind of retro looking ones so so that's it, that's the Sea Glaive. Um, I'm quite happy with it so far. So if you uh, liked the video, please like, leave a comment. Um, if you really feel like it, share it. And uh, geez, thanks for watching.